All right, we got two special guests here tonight on the Focus Podcast, and it's episode 38 with Congrats. the Lord and Ray Halo. Thank you so much. Hey, welcome, good sirs. And this is just uh, completely spontaneous. So we're here. We're in control. We're doing it, man. We're doing it, guys. <laughs> we're doing Yo, welcome big, to the lab. Shout out to Focus. Shout Jeez. out to you guys, man. Yeah, you. Y'all got anything in those cups? No, I'm gonna take care of that right now. <laughs> we're working on it. So you guys gonna? <laughs> we're working. To you work. guys start up the show, and and I'll work on this. Uh, I mean, yeah, we just we just had a really good dinner. That was awesome, man. Yeah, shout out to Limones. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, in the East End near the beaches. Um, caught up with my brother Ray today. We had a, a chat, you know. Big and, chat. Yeah, but big chat. Big chat, man. S- spiritual chat as well because yeah. fellowship is very important. Yeah. Um, and also just want to say like to anybody out there traveling through their challenges, through their life, figuring out who they are, Tell just know that there. you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. The universe loves you. It's working out in your favor. Um, and sometimes the things that we ask for we may get the the values and the and the um, skills that we need to get those things. Maybe not those specific things, but we're being prepared in different ways and molded in different ways for it. So you are loved. And there's timing too, right? Like there's timing. It, it's not gonna. It might not happen as fast as you'd like, but it also might not take as much time as you think either. Like it's both ways, and, yeah. and you don't know when it'll be applicable. What what what. Um, which one will be applicable when? So, I mean, for me personally, like struggling with timing and like knowing if I'm going too slow or too fast, whether it be musically, life progression in general, you know, like I, I try to ground myself with that. It's, like you said, like God has a plan. <laughs> God has a plan, right? There, there's a plan, you know, and, and there's also like holding your, your faith you know, knowing yourself enough to know who you are and being capable of just, you know, walking, walking by faith. You know what I mean? The thing might not be right in front of you, but it's understanding that you'll get there. Absolutely. You know, I like what you said. You're just like uh, about like being ready, you know, and what I think it is, is like if you're always like improving yourself and, uh, you know, growing and educating and like you know building community and like growing this what you want to grow you're almost ready for situations so it's like when they arise it almost seems like something so out of the ordinary but it's like you're you're ready for this you know what i mean like you've you've prepared and you've conditioned yourself to like yeah be available for an opportunity like this you know here we are. <laughs> Here we are. Cheers, boys. Cheers, man. Yes, yes. Cheers, man. Get that on the wide shot there. Respect. And uh, yeah, welcome to the podcast, man. Oh, this is awesome, man. Right? Yeah, like the lights on, and mm-hmm. everything. I feel like we're we're in the community focus. We're on the focus yeah. podcast. It's my boys. You know, like AM grinding. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get it. <laughs> We got the French wine here. <laughs> I feel like I should have got my makeup done before I came. Right I got That'll be further the, down the, the line. The budget yeah. down the line. Yeah, we'll get we'll get some sponsors. We'll get some people involved. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's. We were talking so much like before this. Uh, let's continue on. What we were, we were kind of just really dissecting the music business and saying like how we're kind of living in this transitional period of you know we're not really gonna see what the traditional um label is anymore it's gonna change it's gonna transform it's gonna be uh up to us the artists to be the catalyst to kind of change us so mm-hmm. just i don't know what reiterate on what yeah, we yeah like we, we we were on like the early shifts you know like i remember coming up and uh, listening to a lot of Nipsey Hustle, mm. you know, listening to a lot of Currency Spitter, um, and then there were like different, um, I guess, smaller record labels that were coming up, like Ross from Records, TDE, um, and also we discussed Odd Future a bit yeah. and how like even collectives, you know, began using certain models that that work really well. Um, 
but it's it's really understanding that there's a space for everybody in this industry yeah. and like the way that it, it used to be gate kept before is like it's not happening anymore you know we got the internet <laughs> You know what I mean? And that is creating independence in such a way where you're becoming formidable. All you need to do is deliver your craft. You know, if, if what you're creating is really dope, mm -hmm. people are going to connect with you. You know what I mean? And the gatekeepers or the people that control that industry, it's, it's like, yeah, like they probably control touring at the moment. But we're also seeing how folks who were under, I don't know, the direction of Bad Boy or Diddy or whatever... We know the truth now about how that industry works. That's for sure. Right? But I don't want to like disdain this podcast with that topic. I want to say that independence is here to stay. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's we're, we're, in, it's we're in a position that. where um, Web3, Web3 is, is, is in a space where we can um, utilize minting, mm. you know, um, projects. You're talking 3D, right? Web, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking, uh, I'm talking um, three-dimensional like, web. No, no, not three-dimensional web. Sorry. Um, sorry about that. It's gonna call me. <laughs> it's all good. I see. It. I I am drinking coffee right now, folks. It's um, all good. <laughs> but I'm I'm more so speaking about the fact that we can mint things. Yeah, I know. You yes. know, and yeah. and our independence is in that. And when I when I do. Th Speak of Web three. I'm, I'm speaking about like the earlier topic of Tory Lanes. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. releasing releasing music and a project via these alternative streaming alternatives to streaming services. Mm -hmm. You know, which were always these major players, right? And even then, they're very gay kept. By by, it's like bypassing middlemen. Correct. Really. Yeah. For your product. I want to talk about gatekeeping. Just like some OGs have talked about this in the music industry before, but I just want to remind like people listening, whether you are a current artist or you're thinking about becoming an artist, making music, whatever. I want to remind you, like 20 years ago, like in the late 90s, if you wanted to create a record, you had to spend like a ridiculous amount of money back then. To, I did that. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you 98, can, yeah. So like, Alex, you can tell me if I'm BS here and what I'm about to say. So it's like, you had to put up a bunch of money just to get in the studio, to get the song recorded, yeah. to get the engineer. If you're in. lucky. You if know, you're so. lucky, you have to have the, exactly. You'd have to have even the connection to even spend that money, then spend the money. And you didn't even know if you were good. You didn't even know if you were good. You're just getting the opportunity to see if you're good. And there's the same with producing, if you wanted to produce, to get in those spaces. So pictures. Pictures, all of that. Exactly. Everything. It applied to so much. Printing CDs. Yeah. Everything. Like, you're talking about, like, a whole landscape that's gone digital. Everything that, that mm -hmm. was attainable. So I wrote an article for a rock magazine, and it was the difference between making music in 1999 and, like, 15, 20 years later. So my, and this is gonna to lead to a question to you guys. Sure. Um, my thing was like, okay, back then th there was a lot of individualism, not per se as like, I'm just boasting about my stuff, but more creative individualism, mm -hmm. where yeah, each yeah. artist was just like unique in a specific way, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have a carbon copy of like so many types of artists. Mm. Not so much, but that's what's being generalized as, as the old, label you know what i mean they're pushing that anyway so it was, my thing was like there's a lot of creativity back then but it was harder to make music because it was so few and far between that you had a chance to record so mm -hmm. everything you were holding had to count when you went to the fucking studio mm -hmm. like you practice and you had shit ready now it's like everything everything's at your disposal mm -hmm. so you can like Record any time, almost professionally, yep, yep. with the palm of your hand. It's all accessible. But what I think is like, there's not enough creativity available. It's more sparse now. You know what I mean? So I see what you're saying. Here, here's my question to that: is like, how do you guys, and you guys are coming out of you like you you've been through that whole era, but how do you distinguish between like? Uh, I want to sound like this or or I'm more um, 
not afraid to like make my own sound. So I think that's coming back to where it was 20 years ago. And now with that, you have the technology. So now it's like you seeing people pop out of nowhere, but mm -hmm. it's just like, no, now these people are going back to like individual type of creativity, you know? Hmm. I, I, me personally, like, I, I think it's okay to be inspired by another artist. Like, I listen. No, I don't. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean like that. Not inspired, like, but a complete, like, co carbon copy. Yeah. yeah that's like, what I'm, I'm, I'm not. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, 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 if you're literally copying. Like, going in the studio and saying, make me sound like this. Correct. Right, right. right. You know, and everything you see online, Drake type beat, this type beat. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I think, I think what, what has changed that. <clears throat> Um, and, and what also has like engulfed that is like sample libraries. Mm. You know, a lot of people yeah. aren't actually playing music anymore. Yeah, and, yeah. And coming from a, yeah, yeah, coming from a place. But where not really playing, play but creating it. You don't have to play it. You can just create it. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. But what, what I'm saying is like there, there is a a journey that has to be happen happening for the musician. Yes. You know, to be able to yeah. articulate that vision from scratch. That's a good point. Yeah. Right? Whether it's you working with a band or not. Um, but there's also been these formulas, you know, based on capitalism, based on metrics. People are using data to kind of justify doing things. And they're like, oh, this worked. Mm -hmm. Right? So we want to be successful. So let's let's use this thing. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a model that we're seeing slowly, like, like... I guess die in a way reach its peak i'd say Almost yeah because like. yeah we have the the tommy richmond's right the million dollar baby record where yeah. a great great record incredible record yeah incredible. and when you listen to the mix on that record it's not what you would traditionally hear on on mainstream radio or pop yeah. radio right it's such a unique sound and taste and it's like it's it's beautiful though because it's very creative absolutely you know and i think a lot of folks within the industry they were looking for this clean poppy sound polished yeah very polished mm -hmm. and it's like where's the emotion that we're trying to feel yeah that's what's missing that's what i was trying to make my point it was really like yes everything's clean and sounds crisp and all the footage is crisp but it's like there's no creativity there's no uh like very original music videos anymore too it's mm -hmm. very the same theme over and over so it's like, where's the, the creative people standing out? You know what I mean? We're like, uh, you know, in the 90s, you could distinguish like what type of rapper that was. You know what I mean? Like Correct. That's yeah, this yeah. type of rapper. And even if they were kind of the same style, they had their own uniqueness to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's people now, going bar for bar with, with yeah. certain people. Like just jacking like straight up full out lines on records. Oh yeah, there's just straight up full styles, uh, you know, eight bars, like just fill in the blank here. And we don't need to, like it's obvious, Drake has done a lot of that. And there's been uh, a lot of other artists that do that too. It, it can be done tastefully though. Yeah. Because I, I do think in his case, sometimes it can be done in a way where it's like, He's paying homage. You don't know the whole story, too. That's the thing. C correct, right? right? He might be working with another writer. He might be working with a producer that's recommended that He might have got a sound. blessing from that guy. And correct. It's been like, and sure. it's, like, it's like, if, if you get past an alley-oop in that way where it's like, mm -hmm. yo, like somebody's actually recognizing your talent, just like go on there and say something positive about what that person has done rather yeah. than like uh, you you getting mad or, or whatever it is. Because in this day and age, like, Creativity is something that we can all build off of. Yeah. You know what I mean? And have those conversations, you know, question people that are using creative um, tactics like that and, and copying others. If they're not giving those people credit. Yeah, that's the thing. Right? <laughs> that's the thing. Then, yeah. then you should be paged on it. But then it's hijacked. Yeah. I, I honestly believe that there are lots of artists that do pay homage in such a beautiful way. Yeah. I that agree. we, we got to celebrate that too because as, as artists, like, um, we have to champion each other, mm -hmm. you know, and in every other industry, in my opinion, mm -hmm. they, they use and um, they use the understanding and the wisdom of folks that have come before them to build off of. And it's not something that, you know, they, they try to like, you know, pull others down for. So I think creativity is, is something that we all share in. And I think there's a clip with Pharrell where he's like, 
the, the universe is full of ideas, right? And if you don't use that idea, somebody else might use it. Yeah, this is true. It's floating around. It's just around, you know, and we got to knock at your door. And if you don't answer it, it's going to go to somebody else, <laughs> to, you know? Yeah, I mean, I guess like for me, the way I look at it, ideas are meant to be shared. Music is meant to be shared, right? So it's like, yeah. it's very delicate like situation because we don't want to encourage other music makers to straight, like we talked about, rip other people off. Like that's what we don't want. But at the same time, like when you think about when music is most enjoyed, it's it's when other people are listening to it or someone like takes a beat from a song and makes another song from it. And it's like, like when do we like th those lines should be drawn where it's like that should be OK. That should be encouraged, like making something new, like transformative. That's what the word they would use, transformative, paying homage. I think that's an integral part to making music like like you might hear like two chords that you really like, but instead of like finishing the progression with like two other chords from that, you're like, okay, I'll take these two chords and now I made something else. So maybe those first two notes, first two uh, seconds of the song sound like that, but it's like, no, I took comedy. Well, your influence. Your influence, yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. that's okay because also what I think people don't understand is like everything that's been made Everything that you make has been made. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're just circling. Like you I recircle it. I, I couldn't agree more. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. it's like we have to, I feel like not everyone, but we have to remind ourselves. It's like, listen, we're not like some Beethoven savant. Not that we don't have potential, but like, let's just chill a sec. Let's humble ourselves. Like yeah. we're, we're, we're all making music and that's the idea. Not that we're better than anyone because we've come up with a B diminished going into a D minor six, yeah, yeah. eighth you know sustain yeah. like okay like chill like i don't know that's my <laughs> thing like, music it, it, it should be shared it should yeah. be encouraged to you know like pokemon cards like, hey you, you came up with that okay cool look, look at mine like yeah. oh, I mean, can we trade yeah, yeah cool like what can you do with this let me see what i can do with it. like that's that's the 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 fun in music mm -hmm. you know that fellowship in the music yeah no i agree and it's it's kind of like uh it's Music is a different art form because it's more like uh, painting. Sometimes it's just like you're painting what's in front of you and what's what you're imagining, you know. But music is like what's what you're listening to, what mm -hmm. type of music you're listening to. That's like you're almost like a filter. You're the filter what it's going through, and you're kind of making that translation in yourself. So it's like sometimes it's not on purpose. A lot of the times it's not on purpose. Like a lot of people. You know, from this walk of life or this walk of life could come up with the same riff. It's true. And you have no idea. And it just happens. It's just weird, you know. And uh, I had a song with Poor the Cow way back in the day, my buddy. And we had this riff. It was like, bam, bam, down, down. It was like on a high keyboard. And Pharrell and Justin Timberlake came out with a song two years later and had that breakdown. Bam, bam, bam. It was like... It can happen. Like people Could. fuck around the same keyboard and they fuck around the same pattern. Sometimes it just like pass cross, and it's just like you know there, there's not an intention of plagiarism. It's almost just no. like wow, that was like kind of had foresight for that, and also it's just timing. Very you much know? so. Like it's and also like you said, it's more of a more times out of not. It's just like paying tribute homage just to like this is what i like you know this is what's influenced me this is like mm -hmm. like i think with music especially mm -hmm. like you know we can get it, it can get political too but it's like if we're on the side it should always lean to the side of accessibility right we shouldn't sacrifice accessibility mm. to keep something like pure in my I opinion like that. just like in politics we should always lean on the side of freedom instead of like uh, I don't know what's the opposite of freedom, like um, the tyranny, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word, right? Even though, like, this control, control, yeah. right? even though it's not going to be perfect, it's going to be hard, it's hard to find that balance. Yeah. But again, we should, we, if we're going to be biased in any direction for music, it should be accessibility. We should try to make it as accessible. We shouldn't, shouldn't discourage people. Um, 100%. You get what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah. yeah. So I love what you said about that. So let's kind of get out of our, you know, 
outside bubble of the industry. Sure. And let's start talking about our, what we have. Okay. All of us <laughs> each have our own entities, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. that's a good segue of what you're saying right there. And I love what you said. That, that's such a fucking catchphrase. Accessibility for music for everybody. And that's what it's about, really. And it's like, in the essence of it, music is a feeling. It's mm-hmm. not uh, something that goes through your ears. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It does translate through your ears but it it goes through your feeling Mm. your vibration you see it taste it in a way it has a fragrance it has like a memory trigger there's so much probably other senses that we're not even aware of that are attributed to music right it's it's spiritual to me it's the language of the universe too really and it's like what 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 we said connects everything to it's definitely spiritual it is Probably the essence that we don't see that's there and then connects everything together. Frequencies. So it's like, where do you, like, I see the, the possibility of so much, like, accessibility for music, you know? That's good. Uh, physically disabled, like, yeah. hearing impaired, yeah. visual impaired. And there's this place on Queen Street here called, uh, what the hell? Uh, shoebox or something. Why can't I? Come on, remember. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, anyways, it's, it's it's accessibility. They um, provide this, and it's like schooling for kids or just anybody with accessible problems. Yeah, that's dope, like, man. So it's like, where do you guys see like? Well, that's this is a huge broad question. So for a, like that people who can normally just not walk into a bar and see music. So there's VR in that too. So that question, but also like the what you think a venue is now. So that also kind of goes together. So a, a, a venue is where the the people are. Yeah. You know where the community is, and that could be your backyard. That could be your living room. You know, we we've seen. Um, I I used to do this thing called artery back in the day. Yeah. And it would be like. I met so many good people from that as well, but it would be like you invite people over to your apartment or your house and you perform in their attic for like yeah. eight other people. And it's such a small, intimate gathering yeah. that you truly get to connect with community. Um, but then if you're keeping up with what's happening in Oakland right now with La Russell and what Tieta has built, they're doing backyard shows consistently, mm-hmm. you know, and they're, they, they have built that up, their own community you know, in their backyard. So they, they, they don't have that overhead of a venue. They don't have this this um, this kind of like lack mentality where they don't have anything going for them. It's like, yo, this weekend we're doing a show. Next weekend we're doing a show. Well, it's about the art now, really. It's, and the community that's coming out to you. It's your not show. about showing up for a fashion show and bottle service and all that stuff. All that stuff disintegrates. Correct. And it doesn't last. What's left standing is the art of hip hop. Mm. That's what's left. Yeah. And that's what like people are want and gravitate towards. So it's like if you can make the the setting and the uh, you know, place comfortable for people around you and and familiar, then it's you know, anything's a venue, right? It, it exactly like you literally almost read my mind. Like I like I was about to say, like, it's not like what makes a venue. That's not like you are the venue. Think about mm. it. You are the venue. Yeah, well, because the same that's some some swag. This there. is some groundbreaking yeah. ideas here, guys. Okay, the universe yeah. is, is yeah. giving me these thoughts. I did not come up with this. Yeah. No, but think about it like this: like the same venue that like someone that just bombed did. Maybe there's an app a week ago. A famous professional or just someone that's really talented came in and they killed it. They made it that they made that venue like live for their performance right they made it they're the venue like a, a true professional someone that's are truly passionate they can like you said be in someone's attic and do a show that's the venue that becomes the venue but they're they're the venue in that sense like they're facilitating that so it's like when you ask like what makes a good venue you make a good venue because mm-hmm. like you know the locks can go pretty much anywhere <laughs> and they're gonna run that like it could be literally the most rundown place if the lock shows up 
You got Styles P and Jada Kiss, which you know, I'm a little advised. I just seen them live. They were in <laughs> Toronto like a week ago. With the respect that was sick. So you got fresh eyes. They, I, well, yeah. they had they did their uh, it was a um, third decade anniversary tour show. Nice. Where did they play? Uh, at the Masonic Lounge. Oh, Young, nice. Young and Davenport's nice right. Bartend. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was like, I was like, wow, so blown away. These are professionals. And it's like, we've seen, I've seen other acts. I'm not trying to, you know, like talk bad about other bands and stuff, but like these guys killed it. Even though I'm on the same stage, I've seen other people, you know, leave a lot more to be desired, right? So it's like, again, circling back to the original question, like what is the venue? The artist is the venue. The artist makes the venue. That's, Cheers that's, that. <laughs> Cheers right. that I'm glad these call, like these yeah. are hitting with you guys and connecting. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. You're, you're yeah. Right now. This is beautiful. Yeah. This, is the, this is the truth. This is truth right here, right? Yeah, man. And I like this is what Josh and I were going on today because Josh was on the same wavelength. He created the the canopy thing, the backyard thing. Mm. So he hooked up with his boys in in 2020, and they created this thing in the backyard, and they created a series. And they created a standard too. So he was like, okay, we did the jug thing. We did tickets. So we're just going to suggest a fee, but we're going to make it a high standard. So when people came in and saw the quality of it and they're like, okay, yeah, they didn't have any, you know, fuss in paying a high price standard. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it falls into exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. You are the venue. So it's like, yes, Okay, dress it up a little, a little these, you know, a couple of lights, and doesn't take a whole lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Takes a little bit of creativity, but not a lot, not out of your pocket. So, you do that, and then the people appreciate it. You know what I mean? It's intimate. It's like you're playing for them. You're giving your whole product. You're the product. You're the venue, and it's like bring it to where people are comfortable. And if people are comfortable in the spot, it's like, man, they'll shell out dough. They'll give 45, 50 bucks to see you play, you know? Absolutely. And that's more better. That's better than like a facility that you're forcing yourself to enjoy. And also like rallying up people to come out where, you know, it's like you're really asking for favors for people to come out. And it's like, even if I, like, certain ones that I played at, I was like, I don't think I'd want to come up to this one. <laughs> yeah, I respect that honesty. No, man. and it's like, that. you have to do that inventory after yeah. eventually, but it's I like, you know, you get your, 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 your numbers and your volume in, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I don't want to call any place out, but it's a specific one, like downtown Ottawa. And it's like, it's a landmine of like, really aggressive homeless people and like things that it's a different issue but it's like not the best way to get to a venue you know what I mean it's like I wouldn't even go to this venue so it's like I'm asking people to come out no that's honest I love that man that's that's real I don't want to say the name of the venue too but yeah we also like speaking on that topic of of houseless folks Mm -hmm. you know um we need more support in our cities for housing in general, you know, and people that live on the margins. And, um, I think, I think whenever we approach like very, uh, unique subjects like that, I think folks who are living on the streets, right. Looking for community, looking for home. Sometimes the local people, the artists, you know, the people who are working in that area are their closest thing to home. You know what I mean? Like the or busting, escape, escape, mental I, escape. I, 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 I would, I, I tend to stay away from like trying to escape in any way mm-hmm. um, and more so create a home. Yeah. You know, because oh, yeah. like, you know how the artist is the venue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, the yeah. artist is also a home. Exactly. Yo. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. To the people. And if you're not working with, with your community. A mental space of home. Correct. Yo, man. Like it's a spiritual yeah. space. You know what I mean? Because you're Jesus also, that, man. If, if you listen to the music yeah. that, that you create, you're speaking out against a lot of the things that these folks are. Bro, doing. you true. nailed it, dude. It's you true. fucking nailed it. And that's you know? like, it's that true. hits like, and you nailed it. Like, cause we were doing the thing of painting the lady. Remember when we started <coughs> doing the live broadcast thing there 
and I'm setting up one day and like it's the day Van Halen dies, right? So yeah. they turn the speakers out to Hosington and they're just blaring it. And people are walking by like, thanks, man. Thanks for fucking blaring that music, you know? The music is the fabric of society. Like, yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. It's the fabric of, of motivation, feeling good, you know, getting over fear. All this type of stuff. It's like confidence. Love. So much love. Yeah. Anger, anger outlet so many things that contribute to people like getting through the day is with music it's yeah. such a fucking important tool mm -hmm. and like piece of art that's like who we are as like expressive people you know and without it it's like you have you saw the outcomes you know what i mean like you saw what the the lockdown uh created you know what I mean? Yeah. Without we, that live music, we got to see we got to see our neighbors. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I think I think a lot of a lot of communities. But like, it created something too. It it, it did, uh, but we, we really got to see, <coughs> to see the understanding and the representation of what it felt like to be excluded. Yeah. And and a lot of folks had never experienced like you can't enter this place, please stay away from me, like. It's totally foreign yeah. to their, their it's, whole upbringing. It's, yeah. yeah, it's very it's yeah. very different to how folks would understand myself or yourself mm -hmm. in that light. Because, it, you know, you dress a certain way, you could enter certain parties. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You dress a certain way, you could walk down certain neighborhoods and not be... Remember carding? Like, probably two decades ago in, in Toronto or a decade ago? Whatever it is. like never happened to me, but I was with people. That <laughs> it, happened it, it happened to me well, up wait, the street at Victoria Park carding? Station. Like, what, what do you mean? Like... Well, carding is when um, police officers would approach oh. people that they suspected of cr criminal activity and just say, like, yo, what's your ID? You know? Damn. And, and, and a majority of the time, like, those people were just walking through their neighborhood. But they got considered to be criminals. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, and, and it's, it's kind of like that exclusion, mm -hmm. right, is detrimental because now you don't feel like you're a part of your community. You don't feel like you... you you have that liberation or that freedom to express yeah. yourself, even if you're just wearing a hoodie or you're, you're, you're just walking down the street to go and get some food. Mm -hmm. Right. And that exclusion from like beautiful places makes you feel like you don't want to live in a beautiful place. Yeah. If that makes sense. Or like you feel like you should live in a certain area and it, it, it's like programming, right. In a way where it's like, ah, oh, this is your area. This is this area. Stay out of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but that also takes me to the point where, um, the that that whole 2020 like um, pandemic uh, it revealed a lot of the challenges that folks that we don't support or like don't receive any support have and artists also suffered quite a bit because yeah. a lot of artists like weren't able to perform shows anymore to audiences that's their outlet that's their mental outlet yeah and and that's community yeah right so being 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 an artist we, we definitely found a way to kind of like catch up throughout yeah we had that live stream at the painted lady um and i believe like around that time you and i were like teeing up for some some um, outdoor activities and festivities we we still managed to do a show i think you were there too yeah we did a show at the bar cathedral i was I, yeah that yeah. was i lined that up you guys yeah yeah, yeah there you that. go yeah. you lined up for him and yeah. he just invited me and yeah. uh, we made it we made it happen like yeah so i'm pretty sure that uh, yeah respect <laughs> i never forgot that <laughs> like that, that was, was fun we, we still made it we made uh, we still made it happen so you and know, and we needed that though, yeah, we, yeah. right? So so like it, yeah. imagine it, like we're super social and we're always with each other and things like that and doing these shows. Yeah. And during that time, like we understood isolation to a new level, right? And the the art that was created or the revelations that we all received, like I love, like to be honest, I loved how all of my folks grew. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of, of people who kind of went through very challenging times as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? But yeah. that awareness changed. So so did the art. And the things that we started to care about, it changed. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I think we're in a position now to say that we can impact music in a way where it uplifts and it brings community together. Mm -hmm. You know, and how do we do that without following any of the older models? And how do we champion in, um, I guess, 
the ageism that's in the industry, the sexism, um, and the racial bias when it comes to the type of artist you can be. Mm-hmm. Right? It's 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 a very unique journey, right? Like, if you're talented and you have the technique to do things, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but there is so much gatekeeping and barriers that have been put in the way of artists, and then people don't value that artist to what they're creating. So, anyways, that, that's sometimes I, I think about those specific challenges that we all face, and I'm like. Yo, I should be able to do some country. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I should be able to, to yo, do some Johnny Cash. Yo, Dak, <laughs> I tell, Dax was there. I, d- I just did the Country Music Awards. I worked the Country Music Awards. Mm-hmm. And Dax was there. Dax again. a rapper? Yeah, he's there as a as this black guy. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, and, yeah. He's, and he's like, uh, you know, um, giving away an award. And I'm like, damn. I'm like, he did one country song. Good for him. He's like you, one country song. You're a country artist now. That's but that's all you need. Yo, he's he's that's like, all it takes. And we shot in two years ago. We did a cool uh, 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 live uh, segment of his, his song there. Damn. Okay, but, I, I love country. Yeah, like <laughs> so do I. And I think it's very similar to hip hop. Like you look at the stories; they're very two story, different oriented genres. Yeah. And it's like a lot of self-reflecting and a lot of blues, man. A lot of like hard times, <laughs> and it's the same. It's very similar. So I, I, this, I always, I keep saying this all the time. I want to do a, a census, you know, like a Pepsi challenge, and it's like lyrics, There's no <laughs> instrumentals, and you're like, is this a country song <laughs> or is this a, a hip hop song? It's like, shotgun killed his wife, all this shit. It's like, yeah, it's hip hop. It's like, no, actually, that's a country song. That's. <laughs> That that would be interesting. That would be you know? very interesting. And I to, I guarantee you a lot of but also guesses like, would be off. Let, let's you know? not let's let's not like like I I love country because I used to listen to a lot of country growing up. My mom played country, and we also listened to a lot of calypso. Mm. <laughs> and and calypso always reminded me of country in a certain way, where it's like the, this folk, yeah, yeah. storytelling. Yeah. yeah. And and in calypso, there's a lot of jokes and a lot of like you know. These motifs. Sat- there's a lot of satire in it. Yeah, yeah, got it. you know, and and you gotta really, you gotta which really gets totally. Great. Sorry, I don't want to, but totally gets lost in which is a kind of an art form of hip hop. Is like there's a lot of sarcasm in it. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of sarcasm. I mean, so I'm and it's the of that. well, it's like yeah, but it's funny. It's joking, and it was also like who was also really good at that before him was um, cannabis was good. Cannabis. And, and cannabis. Also, and also, uh, what about o- ODB? DMX and ODB. Yeah. ODB played up a Rest character that was brilliant. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was comical in a way. In a way, it was like okay, he's so belligerently like he should be in like he's coming off as an alcoholic, but it's flowing so tight. But it's the appearance of like the the looseness of like. You know the drunken mask. The drunken mask, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he's the tightest woo of them all, man. Like <laughs> seriously, he was like, I think, I think it's, and he had the biggest features out of the all of them. Yeah, like Method Man had some big features and stuff like that, but nobody had bigger features than ODB, and nobody had a bigger price tag than ODB, man. Like, <laughs> like. But he's the, the <laughs> one that appeared to be the most reckless and the most unstable. You know what I mean? Well, I like, think I think he was as he appeared to be. Like I think like I mean, if you look at interviews with like you know, Wu Tang and what they loved ODB, they still do. But there's a beauty of the artistry that takes over. But too, he wasn't. Where it's like you're yeah. that character, but you're not buying into too much. But it's like the artist, the beauty of the artistry of the character blows up, and uh, like he was like. He was what he was before he got on the bike. Exactly. He That's was, what I'm saying. Yeah, like, you yeah. know, he wasn't pretending to be yes. a crazy, else. Old, yeah. old, dirty bastard. Yeah. Like, he was an old, dirty bastard <laughs> before he was, he was the old, dirty bastard. No, you're bastard, right. That's you know? a good point. No, so, that's- like, he... Well, that's authenticity, right? Yeah, like, authenticity. That's authenticity. authenticity. If you're always, it's authentic, and it's always been there, and it's like but, but then they can the times catch up with you, right? Here's perspective. Like, here. Here's yeah. perspective for you. So it's like, do we want like? Do we want to encourage, you know, what's the word? Self abuse in the name of like authenticity? 
like oh like I am I'm just a raging alcoholic who just no you know, I'm not saying that's no, who he no, was no, no. but I'm just creating a scenario yeah. here it's like oh I just do Molly Percocets like little Zan or I don't know yeah. like I'm not trying to like like hate on anyone like I really don't have I feel no way about any of these people but it's like do we want to encourage authenticity so much where like becoming a degenerate essentially is acceptable because oh the least you're being authentic like well authentic? You know i think i think you can probably really elaborate on this but i'll say something really quick it's like i don't think people will buy that shit anymore you don't think i mean i don't think so i don't think I don't people know. are gonna buy like there is an people, audience well people are saying like like if you're gonna say oh like i'm doing I'm just talking about this just to be cool. If you are that, then okay, then I, yeah, yeah. it's gonna come off as that. But if you're just like, like you know, the, the door's wide open with Drake, and it's like you're no, you're not a gangster, dude. You grew up in Rosedale. You're well off. You never had to go through any of this type of stuff. So just stop trying to do stuff okay. like that. But there's on the other side, it's like if you're you're too, uh, like sugar-coated nice they're gonna see through it either way i think like whoever you are roll with it and i think the audience will figure it out yeah and that's think, true and i think the audience is too smart now honestly yo the, it's like young folks are intelligent the smart as fuck you know what i mean and, and, and a lot of a lot of people view view it as negligence that they yeah. don't they don't really like they're sarcastic they don't really care about what's What's happening? They don't care about things that don't matter. Anymore. Yeah, it's, That's it's the like, thing. like we we realize, like, young people are realizing right now that like yo life is to be lived. You know, we, we're tired of these like fake motifs. We're tired of yeah. these these things that people have just done for tradition. It's like, can we live a life worth worth having joy, having love, having community around? Yeah, I wanna I wanna sit down and laugh with my friends all day. Yeah, yeah really you know cool. what I mean. Who doesn't? And, wow, yeah, it's, laughter is the best yeah. music. It's so, it's so simple, right? Yeah. And um, that's authenticity. I yeah. see young folks right now as just being authentically themselves. They see the world for what it is. They can see through all the bullshit, and they're like, "Why am I paying this much for rent in this city?" Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, why is the music sounding like this? What's being pushed on to me? Not even the thing that they like the most. The generation of question askers again. Yeah, because it's been a whole generation of nobody asking questions, and now it's questions, which is great. You need questions. Absolutely, it's, uh, it's just like, and 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 that's on authenticity. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, like if you can truly ask these questions and somebody could honestly answer you, right? But if, imagine being fed lies for a long time, you know, and and that's that's um an interesting place to be. Um, well, here's the thing. It's like authenticity. <laughs> like, take, take, take this in. Authenticity is used to manipulate people. Absolutely. Like, straight up. 100%. Straight, straight, straight up. up. So that's where I'm... And we've already, we already know, and I'm not here to enlighten anyone, but I will touch on it. it, it it's... We already know that music is a, is a form of manipulation. Oh, you know, 100%. use. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say. Percent. Okay, let me let me backtrack. Is there candy in it? You know, <laughs> music is used to manipulate people, and it's used to indoctrinate people. It's used to shift people's perceptions. So, what I'm saying is, for me, like going just to kind of like you know uh, round off my topic, uh, my my point on authentic the authenticity. It's like. I believe authenticity is super important. I'm not saying for people not to be authentic, but it's feeling like to me, and I know kids are getting smarter, we're getting smarter, adults are getting smarter, and there is a shift, I'm not denying that, but there are still a lot of people who I feel like are being manipulated, being fooled. More by people than people that are actually getting yes, better. It, that's, that's There's the more detail. people that are being manipulated. And there are people waking up to it. there are people waking up. That is like, and the that's my dumb thing. is getting bigger by the double. And my final uh, thing I, I want to say. I'm like on the opposite end of the spectrum. You haven't oh, been to the States good. too much. And I just want to, I want to put people on. Is like, my last thing I'll say about this no, is like, just, is that like, I just be wary of people who are coming across as authentic and just because they're like, yeah. oh, this is just who I am. I'm off being authentic think about it yeah I, I gang bang but yo it's just it's how i grew up you know it's what i do it's what we us people do it's like yo is that really a message you're trying to be spreading and 
I'm not saying it's everyone. Yeah. And it, it's very nuanced and it's complex. It's not black and white. And I, I can admit that I don't understand it fully. But still, a lot of wolf and sheep clothing. That's all I'm gonna say. I agree. I, and I, Ooh. I think that's there's a. I think that's all I'm saying. I think there's a lot of charlatans out there. There opinion. you go. Charlatans. In my opinion, good word. <laughs> because Straight up. I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. Like, there's a lot of horse shit in that too. And there's good intentions. There's real intentions. There's real people that with good intentions of helping and stuff like that. But there's a huge wave of like bullshit like that. Where back in the day you can really distinguish it. Like Tahlequah, Common, Most Def, uh, High Tech. These guys make a certain type of music. Mm. There's uh, uh, Jay-Z... You know, Memphis Bleak, all these type of guys that make a certain type of music. There's this and this. Now it's like, who the fuck knows, right? Like, this person does this 10 different styles or whatever, or is just like changing for whatever the trend's going towards. And it's also like faking on the authenticity. It's almost too pushed, you know what I mean? It's like the, you know, the ayahuasca chick rapping. Or whatever, I don't and it's I don't, and it's like I don't know if she's legit or it's like <laughs> this is really a fucking, you know, playing on like what we, we gotta listen to trending, that. you know. Yeah. So, and I don't know what it is either because, for me, freestyling is something off the top of your dome. Yeah, but apparently nowadays freestyling is what i call memorization <laughs> well yeah nowadays freestyling like you memorize your verse you go to the radio station that's not freestyle and, and then you say it over whatever beat they play that's not freestyle that's that, not, yeah that you've memorized your song yeah, yeah, yeah and so that's like that's a different thing but but that's that's the thing too like when, when we think about poetry right we have we have people who can freestyle right oh you know, which is interesting, yeah. which is a little different than the actual like if we're out in the, I don't know, at the bus stop just chilling, or we're we're in the lobby of a building just having a cipher, mm. right? That there's freestyling in that too, but then there might be some bars that you wrote the week before while you were doing your free verse at home, mm -hmm. right? And you're just like, yo, I'm gonna try these bars in this freestyle, and I think that happens sometimes. I think sometimes like you know we're we're excited to share. And as an artist, I, I have done that millions of times, but I also know what freestyling is. And I think mm. there might be that gray area Here, where some people don't fully understand. I want to interject yeah. with, because I know exactly what you're saying, because if you, a certain amount of times, you become like this theme. If you're, you know, branded yourself. I'm this type, I've, I spit about a lot of this subject a lot. So there's a lot of key words that you come back to that you use a lot. Mm -hmm. So in your freestyle, it's almost like a blueprint sometimes. Like I've, you know, how many words I've tried to rhyme with focus and there's things in there that are like always come back. Like, so they pop up in the same freestyle all the time. So it's like something that's like you're carrying through as a blueprint as your uh, individuality as a rapper, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I see that, and honestly, like, there there's this, I've, I mean, I don't want to say I've studied, but, like, from, like, the freestyle artists that are, like, killing it now, I forgot his name, it's some white guy from, like, LA, California, and, like, what he'll do is the video I've seen from him, and I've seen a couple others, but the one I remember, like, he'll go to, like, a lineup for something, so there's a lineup of people for somewhere, and you'll literally like he would start the, the video is him starting at the back of the line and freestyling all the way to the front of the line. That's an exercise. But it's like, like, but that's how he keeps it fresh. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? That's how he keeps it like new and, and not to take anything away from me either. Like, dude is like super talented. The way he can like think of a rhyme for a word that he just like from just seeing like camera, then light, and then like doorknob or whatever, but just on the street with people, people would just yell words to him and they'll He's freestyling live, and I wish, like, I'll try to find the video, I'll send it to you guys. You know, but when like, your parents tell you when you cheat on a test, and it's like you feel good about like getting a good grade, mm. and they're I like, don't know that they're feeling, like, actually. but they're no, but they're <laughs> but they're just like, go ahead, cheat, but you're cheating yourself. Mm. I feel like that if you don't do the right exercises for hip hop and rapping, you're cheating yourself as a rapper in the, in the long term. You're wasting your yeah. time. 
in a yeah. way. Like so, to me, the shortcuts like that, and there are shortcuts to make convenience. Like to me, like I I don't know I'm old school, but sometimes it works with however you want to present it. But to me, like there's a few things that I don't do. There's like I don't do a lot of punching. <laughs> I don't punch in when I record. I don't because if I can't do it live again then I don't want to do it right so then also I don't do um, there's just things that like I don't read off my f phone for like live stuff there's there's certain things I won't do right there's challenge like to challenge myself to throw myself out and I know I'm gonna fuck up and I know it's gonna fucking fall on my face but these are the exercises that make me better and that in the long run when I do write something it's there when I want it. So it's like every yeah. day I write, every day I read. It's hard shit, like an hour, an hour. And also I do what I call, that's what I call ghostwriting. To me, ghostwriting is just open up your mind. There's no restrictions. And I get that in the middle of the night a lot. So whatever is just pops in. And it's just like, it's almost like um, downloading off the crap up your mind, just onto the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, so those exercises, you do that so often. So when the, 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 the feeling arises for a song, you're uninhibited. It just flows. It just comes out. And some of the songs I've written are 95% done. And it's just tweaking a few words after. And it's like awesome. those exercises, the discipline over and over and over. That's what distinguishes like a writer a prepared MC who can freestyle and also I really force myself to freestyle around the house and like I try to like I'm not it's not my best suit but I try to do the best I can to force myself wow. even when I'm uncomfortable to do it it's like I try to do it but it all adds up and also playing with the band live it just like mm -hmm. when it goes off course just try something so it's like all those things I can't do I can't perform live without doing all those things. So it comes easier to some people. And, but to me, it's like I have to put in that work for it to be presentable for, you know. But, but that, that's yeah. an artistic style. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and and sure. I think I think that's that's something that that's that I definitely value and appreciate. Uh, I also understand how having a dynamic style is also very important. Like mm -hmm. your approach to creation is probably different than mine, mm -hmm. yeah. right? W where I, I'm a musician. I started playing the flute when I was young. Yeah. And then so after cool. I started playing the That's guitar sick. Yeah. and then so after, that bass. yeah, then I, I got into keyboard and, but during that entire period, I was sharpening my poetry mm. and what I learned was like, yeah, you can be, you can, you can be technically great as a, as an MC. But there's something beautiful about melody. Mm. I found myself like singing along to R and B songs when yeah. I go to, go to the concerts better than I would sing along to hip hop songs. There you go. You know, or I'd be at the at, at a party and I'm there like the yo. Feeling of it. Yes, and, and it's trying to. Why does it feel like that? And how do I recreate that feeling live? Or um, sometimes you know when you do those one takes at the beginning of a session and you're like, why is my first take the best take? The, yeah, the best take or like the feeling you had. Yeah, or yeah, or if you sleep on it and you record it, like let's say you record it the night before, and then you go to sleep, and then you wake up, and you try to do the same thing again. It's just yes. not the same, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think I think that's just energy and understanding what you're bringing to it, and that has in, influenced the way that I create because mm -hmm. I I do like a raw approach. I feel like there there are a few records, and, and y'all will hear them soon enough. That when they drop. I, I worked on just the melodic part first. Mm -hmm. So there were no lyrics, no words or anything like that. And I think trying it like that was such a unique journey for me because the melodies <laughs> and the harmonies come to me a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but then we sat in the studio and I recorded all the poetry that I wrote to those melodies, like, you know, like three weeks down the line. And that approach was, was different. Then I also worked with a producer that had me do... Um, this like uh, auto tune song, okay. and he recorded short takes of me. He just mm, broke it, yeah. and he'd be like, "I don't like that take." And I'm like, "All right, cool." And I hop back in there, and it was like a freestyle. The entire track was a freestyle. Wow, yeah. just based off of energy. And I, I do think they're just different approaches as to your your artistic journey. 
and that integrity to yourself is so important because that's your style just like odb yeah. had had the old dirty bastard style i'm sure everybody was just like in the studio like bro don't hit the mic or like you know what i mean like yeah. he, he was he yeah. was doing like some really cool stuff in the studio but also kind of like to to um bottle that lightning yeah is not is not like the easiest thing because everybody knows the it's magic the that's flowing through them. It's the most important thing to grab that idea, and yeah. I I know exactly what you're saying. So each album I made, I've tried to like, it's a different way of making it. It's almost the same format, but it's a different way of approaching it. So this one is I've captured a lot of ideas. So with that you know, Kai machine. I grabbed a lot of the ideas. <laughs> and I, I'm gonna go grab it. I suck at my fucking at beats. Like that's my weakness. Is the beats is the like beats, yeah. making the beat. So I got frustrated. So I went beyond that frustration. I'm like, don't worry about it. So what I did is like, it's here. Get the white chat. Hold up. Sponsorship. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yo, Kai. Yo, Kai. Kai. Yeah. 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 Hit, hit us up. The hell Yo, give us money. I bought this fucking like 15 years ago, man. Holy. So yeah, this is a drive. It's a relic. It's a relic. <laughs> Yo, back of, Yo, did you get one off. of these back in the days? Was an MC, MPC player? That would be like five grand, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was ridiculous because it had all the samples in it. So this is just the driver. So it connects to any program and it'll yeah. hit the plugins and it'll be whatever instrument you want. It's, it's all MIDI, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, and... Even those though, like you can you can switch out, you can sample so quickly. Oh yeah, so on, on your computer and stuff. Yeah. So what I was, I captured all that lightning in the bottle in the room over there with this. Mm -hmm. I got the ideas, the best part. So Tim came over with the the drums, and he just recreated the drums I did, and it was tighter, and we did it with the electronic kit. And then Keys came over, he had a huge guitar. So he listened to some of the samples I had, and he goes, "Oh, that's that sound." He finds it, and he goes, "Oh, that's one that that's one octave off or something." He's like, "Well, that that's that clashes there," so he tightened it. Yeah, yeah. So the key thing is, is I got the ideas with the sounds I wanted, and then I just bring the musicians in, and they kind of recreate that's it. That's yeah. that's such a beautiful like, part of the process. Yeah, you're still keeping the the core like you know part of hip-hop where it's exploring different genres it's having this eclectic holistic taste of music mm -hmm. um and then now you're involving musicians you know to kind of uh experiment and like push those chord progressions or those melodies even further you know what i mean and i think a lot of the times like people get caught up with sampling issues yeah and things like that so for for an artist to have the capability of having live musicians that's such a beautiful thing. Just organizing people to come just over and do that. Is pay, also just pay them. Effort. Like, and you don't have to pay them a whole lot. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, you know, most musicians are reasonable. And it's like, I would love to pay uh, $500 per session per musician, which is the proper rate. But it's like everybody's struggling. So I pay musicians 60 bucks, and they come in for an hour. It's not bad. So it's like 60 bucks an hour is a good deal. Pretty good. And as long as you're organized and you're ready, we smashed out like two tracks each with each sport musician. I yeah, exactly. So I brought in, there was a violin player that came in yesterday. Oh, that's dope. And then it, you're learning how to, to utilize your time more importantly. Uh, so it's like this thing, I straight lined them and mic'd them. So I got the mic sound of the room, the full ambient room. Mm. The, the room downstairs is sounds really good and then it's straight line too so i have two options but he's playing the exact same progression yeah, yeah, yeah so i can double it if i want or i can single them out or i can use one as an effect so it's like it's also <clears throat> what i think is really cool and especially what's come out of the pandemic is so many more rappers and artists are getting good at like engineering their own shit recording their own shit and producing and mixing and mastering that's the real freedom that's happening with indie artists and mm -hmm. it's like that knowledge and that like because i grew up all with all that trial and error and now and it's like it's a fucking sweet thing to see it's like somebody can just innovation man how do i do this youtube it's well, like with eyes of you can ai master your track 
Yeah, straight up vertical integration, everything in, in one stop. But it's right? freeing you up also. But I'm trying to say is like the technology in a good way. It's a t- yeah. everything's a tool in a good way. Yeah, to free you up for more creativity. Okay, while while we're on that, right? You just you just spoke about AI mastering. Love, I love AI mastering because it, it means that indie artists have the freedom to do it. But I've recently been learning about like you know how they've used the AI to generate other folks' voices. Yeah. Okay. I've also found this other AI. Because you're going to give them your open mat, like open EDL file to master. Yeah. You, you, like once you, once you get into that, that part of it, I think, I think it's very tricky waters because we don't know what intellectual property and copyright laws look like. Exactly. But there's also like new AI that can also, like you can not have the greatest voice, but the AI could reinforce your voice to make it sound a certain way. Mm-hmm. Right? And a lot more folks are doing this. And but it's, that translates to, well, to live again. Yeah, but it's it's like where, like I know we're speaking about authenticity, but what about art history, right? Uh, yeah. If, if it's fully now only in the box, like everything is being made inside of your computer, mm-hmm. you're not even trying to perform it anymore, mm-hmm. right? How do you kind of judge that art history? And I, I think, I think like, in, in a sense, is it is it really different than sampling anymore? Because no, it's, it's, it's a it's different true. technology of sampling. <clears throat> yeah. So, so that that's that's a unique way of of understanding like the purity of the art now, mm-hmm. right? And I'm I'm in a space of like ah oh, like. I would really love to hear this live. I but and it could be crazy as a record, but if you experience it live and you're not moved by it, mm-hmm. That's or moved thing. by the performance, it's it's tough because you don't know what's real anymore, right? It's like having a fake conversation now, right? Mm-hmm. And and I, I think that's where I'm, I'm more so coming from. It's like how do you experience this thing in an authentic way, without taking away from the person who's created it. Because somebody's actually putting in their time, you know, even if it, if it is a very raw sounding pro- mm-hmm. production, but they're taking their time to produce it fully, you know, and mm-hmm. it's kind of like a very unique, unique space for the music industry at the moment. Um, imagine like a vocalist, right, who has, I don't know, like a vocal range that they just don't have live at all. Yeah. And I think we, we all experienced that with Melodyne and Autotune back in the day. But I think now it's just on a different level. They can literally change your voice tone. Yeah. Like in, in such a way where it's, um, you can't even notice it. Does that make sense? Like it on sounds record, natural. Yeah, yeah. Record, it, it sounds very yeah. natural. But live then, you know, that, that same artist not hitting those notes with the same, uh, with the same power and the same, right? Right. Um, Black Eyed Peas. That's all you gotta say. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, that's why you gotta give respect to like what bands like, um, what is it, Rage Against the Machine? Yeah. Who literally you listen to their records and you listen to them live and it's, same thing. it's the same thing and it's like holy smoke! Like these are like mm. um, like wow, incredible, incredible well, people. Can you attest to this as rappers? This is my like what I think, and just most rappers don't know all the lyrics of their songs. Well, depends. Two, yeah, how much two. songs do they have, right? Front to back, <laughs> front. See, like, you're laughing, right? But it's, just, but it's normal. <laughs> no, no, no. no it's, right? I, I'm saying I know the lyrics, but depending on how I'm feeling, I'm gonna perform that song differently. Every okay, no, no, that's that's that. a different question. But my question is, how? What's the percentage of your songs you know, hundred percent off by heart? You know them. All. I. I think I think that's but, the, okay. But what, yeah. what are you, what are you what are you trying to say? What that? I'm trying to what, say yeah, is what that are you trying to say? I'm like curious. most rappers can't perform the whole song live because they don't remember. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. I I know I know what you mean. I it's like it's like not practicing. But yeah, it doesn't mean they don't know it. Well, okay, here's the th- here's what but I. But they'll think. only do my uh, maybe they'll only do a certain verse live. But also, it's a compacted version of yeah. their entertainment. Okay. So let me like because I've seen right? I've I've. Got, I, I've bartended a lot of live shows with like huge artists from rappers to like singers 
So, and just like live band, like lesser known live bands. And what I will say about, like, about the most famous rappers, here's a perspective. I don't think most people even want to hear the full song. They just want to hear like the five seconds of the chorus. And like, oh yeah, that song, oh yeah, that song's dope. Five seconds later, okay, what's the next song? I don't want to hear verse two, chorus two, <laughs> into bridge. Like it's so very- it's half intentional. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying it is intentional. Yeah. I think it is intentional. How do you get the people going? They they just want to they want to play as many songs as possible, get you like um on like different highs for different as many songs as they have in their catalog. They want to play. Nailed it. Yeah, they yeah. want to play all their like uh, the biggest radio hits, but just a little bit so you snippets, don't yeah. snippets of it where you're like yeah yeah that song okay next song oh yeah that song okay next song that's what I've noticed. And I feel like it's a formula. I feel like it's a formula for life. I even I might even take it into consideration, like not fully. I mean, I don't have any radio hits. So that's what I'm saying. But like, damn man, like they're doing it for a reason. Like it makes me think. Like, like I think know, it's almost specifically hip hop is like that. Is, it is most because like live, almost 100 percent. Like indie live band. Every like, other not doing that. Every right? other act you see, country rock, slow jam. R&B is the whole song's played out. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. You think it's it's driven by the fact that it's a very commercialized thing because it's hundred it's percent. It's meant to be hundred percent, right? and it's the cha- channel changing type of audience of like attention span of like hooks too. And that that you audience I mean? was was kind of, in my opinion, designed that way. Programmed yeah, that I, way. I agree. You let's know, get to that. I, like <laughs> we let's not even get to the, right, the discussion right. of, no. of programming an audience, but no, you're right. That, you're right. That that is a whole other because there's also a reason why, like you know, Christian hip hop doesn't exist in the hip hop space, and it has a very specific genre of hip hop. Why isn't it not just hip hop? It's a good question. You, you know what I'm saying? Like w- when we when we hear when we hear Tyler the Creator um, or like anybody speak about demonic stuff. They're not considered satanic hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, like right. the division in hip hop has always been there. The segmentation of positive things versus all the other stuff is what's considered hip hop. Yeah. Right. And if you're doing positivity or if you're speaking out, it's considered like you know conscious hip conscious hip-hop. Yeah, it's become weaponized. We- we- it's- there was when I was young. Honestly, there was no such term as conscious hip hop. It was called hip hop. Mm. Straight up hip hop. Yeah. It was hip hop. Yeah. It was public enemy. Yeah. It was all public enemy. Yeah. It was everybody. And that's the illusion. It was hip hop. That's the illusion. That's the illusion that's been there created. There was right? no the division. As soon as you put a label on something, exactly. you suddenly set it apart. Exactly. Set us a, a separation. Mid-90s, the gangster rap. Mm-hmm. Like all these specific tiles, like categories of rap. And then when you have, like I said, when you have something that is hip hop, and they. Oh, that's conscious rap. That's like even even those guys didn't like being categorized as that. You know, you, you know these people are being categorized and we're, we're being weaponized. Uh, you were, there's certain terms being weaponized against us as artists. But what I will say on a positive note, there are still some OG rappers like from New York that are still killing it. I.e. Ra the rugged man. I don't know if you know this Master guy. Master Ace. Master Ace. You know Vinny Paz. You know Army of the Pharaohs. Like a bunch of these Big guys. Big to these guys, man. You know, like yeah. it, there's a there's more of them that I I don't even I can't even say right now off the top of my head. But like I know Ari the rugged man. Like this guy's doing sold out shows across uh, the United States, and I'm pretty sure he's doing pretty well. People are hungry for this. Yeah, place. he's doing pretty well. Is he like massively worldwide? Actually, I, I can't even say that. He is known worldwide. He'll go to Germany and he'll sell our show in Germany. And they love him in Germany. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he, he is well uh, um, worldwide. But is he, like, mainstream? Is he it's, on Is he on will every be, radio? That's, that's, that's commercial. Sort of, that's is he commercial? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. and he doesn't want to be. But yeah, you're, yeah. You're, this is where we're getting at. Okay. The, your, the viewer's idea of what commercial is is going to change. As opposed to what we were talking before, comedians. What do you consider commercial for comedians now? Fucking just for the last Montreal does not exist anymore. Good though, it's good. Fucking, there's no sit. What's who's the last uh, comedian you know that has a sitcom on regular television? Okay, but wait, I have to challenge that. that. I that have to challenge that because gone. they're gone. But what's still left? Netflix. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, one second. Before we even get that far, let's look at the Vine stars. Yeah. Like I think I oh, think the yeah, medium yeah. the medium has changed as yeah, to yeah. like how comedians are converting into that space. Mm-hmm. You know, and tra- transitioning from. But their work. What I'm trying to say is that their Netflix is working around the independence of music of comedians. And yes, and comedians no. are dictating. Well, yes, they have to clean up some sort of content. But yes, and no. They're creating their their contracts a lot. A lot of like them. only only established comedians are getting specials though. You're That's right. The thing. It's no, not like right. it's not like they're having like an open thing where it's like okay, they're gonna give uh, ten. But anybody, a chance, right? But anybody who's what what my point is, if you're a good comic, this is the difference. Okay, sure. If you're a good comic and you're edgy. You will get catered up the ladder so fast with all these guys. But that, that, but that have, that's that subjective. Pod, that has podcasts like okay, so I'll give you an example. There's a one guy named Tyler Morrison. He's fucking hilarious, and he's from Bracebridge, Ontario. So Bracebridge is like a tiny Muskoka. town. Yeah, right? Muskoka, right? Yeah. But Muskoka. he's so brash, and he's not afraid to say what he needs to say. That he's got attention of the best comics. In the states, like Stanhope likes him, Kill Tony likes him, all I these love guys Kill Tony. love him, and he's just gone up this ladder. And what I'm trying to say is that the comedians have built this infrastructure, yeah, yeah, for anybody that comes out of the woodwork and is established and has their own. But that's that's Kill Tony. I, you got to give credit to Kill Tony but for that. We're gonna we're gonna have something like that in music in five ten years where I there's hope gonna so. be an independent musician who sells out arenas and has their lineup they're gonna be like hey i'm in town and i'm gonna bring out 10 artists today because it's all controlled by the gatekeepers now yeah live nation controls a lot of the shit and just to give some context it's a a comedic show in austin texas and basically what they do is they have like it's tony hinchcliffe yeah it's his they have reoccurring guests that like you know are certified but they also have like what they call bucket pulls so they'll get like They'll pull from a bucket, like let's say ten names, I random that, people. So they have always new up and coming. And if you're good, they'll they'll, but they're they'll doing push stadium you. Stadium shit now. Yeah. They started Madison with Square like Garden. a small small venue, and they still do that at Madison. So yeah. at Madison Square Garden, like I, they have that same format. Well, they'll have like really like people that killed it, or right? some OG comedians come up. But then they also will pull out some random guy's name or girl's name, yeah. and they'll perform well, for what the first time, right? Like what I'm saying is that f- because the, they're making bank, like a lot of those, of course, are yeah. bank. That's where we're gonna be as indie artists, well, of course. But here's the thing that Ten you, you mentioned, you touched on it earlier. Musicians are getting scammed. Yeah, straight up. But no but one's talking about by, it. but yeah, not yeah. by each other. But here's the thing. With here's my point. Not by you and me. Yeah, it's by the leeches. people that that are in the way, yeah, and yeah. those people that are in the way that are not going to be there in five years. They're going to disintegrate, I, and they're going to be dust in the wind. But that, but, but let's yeah. talk about that for yeah. one second. But, it's like, yeah. dude, I remember so many times when I was younger, like growing up, like like the really, pay to play will not exist. So pay to play, yeah. exactly. So that's one Fuck thing. That shit. Pay to done. play, like you know, it, it sucks. It sucks as an artist to be in a pay to play situation. I, how many times have you gotten a message saying, oh my God, the weekend's coming into town. He needs an opener. Do you want to play? And you're like, holy crap. Like, yeah, I do. Okay, it's going to cost uh, $150. But this, you know here's the I'm thing. Is like, these, these middlemen that don't need to exist anymore because if we have the group together and it, it's about education, about, okay, you're good at electronic press kits, so you're going to help me build my press kit. So I have a press kit. And then you have a, a connection of all these like emails for all these uh, touring venues and these managers. So it's like we work together and basically we present ourselves, like I said, downstairs yeah. to, to email these venues and say, are you looking for an opener? That you leapfrog over these guys that do this type it's, of it's stuff. It's a music co-op. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think, I think but it yeah. needs to happen with honesty. Yeah. And, and the point of looking out for each other. And that's my point of what the comedians did. There's a, there's some sort of honor with them. And there's some sort of like... And hip hop is so tainted with just like feeding off of other people. What's, and what's, what's that? We need to crush that. Yeah, what's, what's that like line? You assign a one, 
dude that signed to another dude that signed to a like oh, yeah. there's, there's a bar mm-hmm. there's a bar that's there. a crazy mm-hmm. bar. i can't remember what track it is that's a crazy bar you know what i mean like it's also understanding that like if you're an artist in this day and age and you're taking you think that you're going to build your your career off of just being signed to another artist or being in the vicinity of a, another artist it's it's pretty much taking the whole social climbing or leeching idea to that level now because independence is here you don't have to do that anymore exactly right you don't have to be you have to rely in, on. yeah in a 360 or in any type of situation where somebody controls what you do mm-hmm. and why would you want that why would anybody want to empower their it's friends degrading. to do that? It's degrading. Oh, it's, some people do. They they'll do anything at the cost of. Um, they do anything for success. So they'll do anything to be famous or anything. Like they just throw all their morals out. They throw everything they hold dear out because they're like they have to be successful so bad, right? And and that's how you get taken advantage of. Well, sure. I turned down a lot of those uh, <laughs> opening roles, like you know, for artists and. Uh, like oh yeah we want you to give a base price of six hundred dollars and i was like listen i'm not gonna go out and do the 50 50 for you it's like i do my own showcases and i rather bring in honesty with people and be clear with them what the costs actually are there you go and i was like i know the cost and it's like if you want to tell me that pub you know posters are five hundred dollars like give me a break man it's crazy like i know that you pay somebody to design a poster for a hundred bucks at the most not even I mean? not even twenty dollars have them under contract they five dollars to do ten it. Up. exactly so it's like these are these things that is that this is what's tainted hip-hop really it's not well it's not just there's hip-hop. there's it's the, not there's the content yes but it's like there's such a you know praying mentality in mm-hmm. this in this and that is confused with hustle and grinding it's, it's like you're not. grinding other people out of their ambitions <laughs> yeah. motherfucker half of your effort is fucking deflating other people but like how many shows right have, like, have we spoken about like yo like i'm trying to respect the people in this in this local scene but how are you not paying the artists that pull up mm-hmm. to perform at your event yeah. that are bringing in an yeah. audience? Yeah, about, you know what I mean. And and that was that was also a very challenging thing to kind of navigate because it's like, okay, where's your where's your next opportunity going to come from, right? Once that happens, those are the only right? entities. Sometimes, because like I said before, like if you don't know how to book your own shows, sometimes those are the only entities, and you're like, that's the only way. Yeah, to get to where you need to go, and it's like I, re- you know, I respect that. I that's you know, that's that way. But it's like I started from hanging out with a Pink Floyd band when I was nineteen years old, and all these dives, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, oh, okay, this is not too hard to do to to put together. So it's like I'd rather go this route than you know, being manipulated in another way but it's 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 tough it's complex it is complex you know you want to be an artist that gets shows and that you know there's more than two people like there to watch it but venues they want someone that's going to bring like a hundred people to fill out their place but at the same time what i think the common ground should be is that you, there should be a venue that's already bringing in a crowd but they need the top talent and the top talent who needs a crowd you know, is going to come and just like, play their ass off, you know, and just like give an amazing show. But I feel like it's been like switched where, it, you know, like the venues are demanding, like you got to bring in at least, at least this many people and you got to sign a contract for that and we're not paying you. Well, the and onus is 100% on you now. It's as always the artist. Yeah. So, yeah. And this is what Josh and I were talking about today. It's like some of the venues need to take responsibility of like bringing people in. Also, seeing that the, you know, somebody is, that's a job now, promoting in social media. Very different. It's a different. It's a new job. Yeah. It's a new job, and it's like what it was in the nineties with somebody who does promotion and the booking, and it's not a staff person. That's the difference because you ninety nine percent of the venues, it's the guy who works there, and he's exhausted, and <laughs> it, the last thing on his mind is booking the artist, and then, then you are booking the artist, and you're looking for all the details. And it's like, it's a shit show. So it's like, that needs to be 
But I think what what I'm trying to get at is that we are the only ones that's going to bring that change and that that level of, oh, of sure. quality. You know what I mean? And it's like that will proceed with you know the audience that wants it. So. The best shows I've done are with Earl and like you know back of Kensington type thing, like or in the middle of Kensington where you had your speaker. We just pulled up. Keep it simple. Just kept it simple. We just, just blasted the music. We did the we did the show right there, essentially. And everyone that wanted to pull up, pulled up. And everyone got to turn on the mic. You are the venue. We were the venue. You are the yeah. venue. That's what was, strictly yeah. energy. Those and, are the best yeah. shows. And, and, and we, what do we call that? Almost Paradise World Tour? Yes. Yeah, you're the you know venue. I mean? You guys are the venue. And <laughs> it, it was like we, we picked a few spots. You know, like we, I remember we went to, to Woodbine Beach, the skate yeah. park there. We did something there. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that was sick. Yeah, we, 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 we did we did uh, what is that Queen and uh, Spadina yeah. King you know, and Spadina King and Spadina no no we, we did Queen. Queen too you, you were there, remember there. you were there with the No Fear when you first made your No Fears I see that I, I the, the, the pink one yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no it wasn't the pink one no. sorry I had the altruism pink one the altruism back then. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, um, you, you were in one of the altruism pink ones and I remember just like Yo, this is oh, crazy. Oh, Spadina Queen, yeah, during the day, yeah, 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 yeah. I have that video. First, my first five dollars uh, bus game with him, and he freaking gave it to me, and it was. It's it's a reminder that you it was can a do. Reminder, it. yeah. It, was, it, it it wasn't the amount. It was the the. It was just like doing it, being with like someone like I consider a close friend, and doing something I love so dearly, and on the street, and something that scared me so much at, at the time, and then just like that competition, the sign, right? It he brought like, me out of that. That lull too. This guy's like, come down to Woodbine. <laughs> there you go. So I come down to Woodbine with this guy, and then we're we're doing the thing, and this guy starts chirping on the corner, and he starts yelling at us because we're playing music, and this guy goes to get into it, but I, he does something that I've never seen before. He just calms the situation down. He's like, hey man, I just want to apologize, and the guy just like calm down. And then right after that, some guy walking his dog comes along and <laughs> comes up to this guy and goes, yo, I work for Sportsnet. Good. I like your music. I want to use your music. Oh, damn. And the Raptors opening. <laughs> it, was, it was wild. And you know what I yeah, said to dude. this guy? I said, I said, you diffused the situation there. And then all of a sudden you were like, you're rewarded. Awarded with something. Mm. That, takes, that takes like, courage. That takes... It takes a lot to do that because, like, to have someone being so aggressive and so negative, like, in your face, and for you to be like, "No, nah, like, okay, no, I apologize," like, that's humble. That's that's humility. Yeah. That like, honesty, man. That's humility in the Bible. I don't know the exact verse, but I know in the Bible it says like, if you treat like anger or something with like kindness. It's like putting coals on their head, something, something like that. Exactly it makes like them, that. yeah, it makes them like you know that's what it is. It's like when you when you take that anger, that hostility, and you get, bring it back with kindness, you return it with kindness. It makes them go even crazier because they're expecting you to react a certain way, but we don't give them that react. That sits with me a lot because I I struggle with that in the sense like I'm, I'm I try to be patient, but. I'm only human, and sometimes I lose my patience, and I'm like, you, you understand? I've, I've been, struggled in that I've been on the, I've been on that side a million well, times, and, and I was ready to throw down for him. <laughs> Yo, I was, I was the, I was ready to throw down for this well, yeah, guy, but I, I stepped aside at, as soon as he started doing something because I was like, whoa! Now I get to see from an outside perspective of how I act mm. because he's younger than me, and I've been through that several times, and I've done that. Where it's not work, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I want to hear like, what was going through your mind. Like, wh what were you thinking at that moment? Like, how did you feel? How did you navigate that? You looked over I, at I, this I, guy. Looked over I, at me, and he just like he just did this. He took a second, and like I, I was grateful. I think that was the, the yeah. difference between me and that gentleman. Is, yeah. Is like I, you were I did grateful struggle. what we had the yeah, moment we had. I, so I was so grateful. It was a good day, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I caught up with one of my close friends. We were just doing music, and we we just had some healthy moments. But I'm not gonna act like I wasn't challenged in that moment. I was, you know what I mean. But I I think in in that case, like just being just being like. Am I really willing to give up this positive energy today mm -hmm. that we just we just got? That's a 
you oh, know, um, am I really willing to like step into this space? And I think, I think like whenever we, so Romans twelve twenty one, right? Um, that's a scripture that I, I kind of live by, which is you, you got to return. Um, don't, don't, uh, I guess, respond to evil with evil, but respond to evil with kindness. And, and notice the two numbers are like mirrored, right? 12, 21. Yeah. So if somebody gives you a one, two, you give them a two, one. Damn. Ooh, damn. damn. Right? Dude. And it's, it's, it's stepping it's stepping into that space and putting it into practice. Showing them, you're showing them their anger. Yeah, you're right. When you don't respond, they see that reflection and how stupid they are acting. Yeah, but also just just that awareness that some people are not aware of themselves sometimes. Yes. You know, because we've all been there. We've all been oh, in hell a place yeah. where reactive. Yeah, where we we might say some shit. I, I, yeah, I we might say something that's not I nice. Said some yeah, stuff yeah. That's yeah. not nice. I'm not proud of you. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. 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 You know, and and how have you dealt with that? You know, like uh, sorry, how have you responded to a situation that you've had to diffuse? I'll answer both questions. Yeah. yeah. First, quite the first one. How I, I re reflection, because mm -hmm. sometimes you say something you can't take it back. You have to reflect. Yeah, you have to reflect, and you'd be like, "Wow, like you know, you, you know, you gotta be sorry about it. You gotta reflect on it. And how can you have done better? So on and so forth." Second question: In the times I've been successful, just breathe, just breathe. That was also it. That's hard though. It's hard in yeah. the moment because yeah, you know you're you're it. so tense. Someone's coming at you and like you're you're fighting your your physical instincts and you, you tense up. You don't breathe, but say, yeah, okay, cool. you're not really in cool. danger. You're not in danger. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah that's how you feel. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's yeah. like see, I can almost <laughs> see how you. Yeah, I can, you got to say. It was so nice. And yo, like the the other thing that I want to say it's about hard, it, though. it's hard though. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yo, this guy stood and he was just like. Fuck him, I'm too into a nice day for this guy to fuck it up. <laughs> really, that's what the honesty came down to beautiful, it. But beautiful. then, I'm in the back, and this guy comes up, and he buys a CD, and he's like, this is the nicest thing I've ever seen. He's like, you two guys doing your thing. He's like, old, young, black, white. He's Aquaman. Like, okay. Yo, Aquaman. Aquaman. Yo, Aquaman. Yo, there's a gentleman named. We should have a video of him, probably somewhere. We could put it in the in this. Yeah. But yo, Aquaman was, like, a lot. Of, I got my phone. I yeah. The, 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 a, a lot of a lot of people look at you know folks that are quite unique in personality and dress differently and all that. Um, but I, I view them as authentic people trying to express themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the world kind of misunderstands and. And there was this wonderful human being. We call him Aquaman because that's what he called himself. And he, we're at the beach busking, and he had these shades on, and he's just chilling. Yeah, you know, it was it was a it was a day to remember. But he said so much positive things to us. And also, wow. yo, he, he was trying our, to be he was trying to be in fellowship, bro. He was, he was our spirit to be in animal. Spirit animal. He was he was also a Christian. He spoke about that very openly. Wow. Very honest human being. Wow, you had, damn! You, how did you find that so fast? This is oh, the day. Let's go. This, yeah, that's the day. Wow, Aquaman. Look how, wow. <laughs> I get to see him. Show the show the camera, man. Show the camera. Yeah, that's hey, Aquaman. Zoom in. Yeah, there you go. Yo. This guy was the epitome of like motivation. Like if you were. Ready for a fight that you just lost? This guy would come be like, "Come on, you could do it, bro!" Yeah, he, bro, he's one of those he's guys. Pumped. Yeah, he, he was just a, a real like supporter, a real yeah, person, you bro, know. Man, what a beautiful day that was too. Look at it, your element, man. <laughs> When I write down these visions, look how short my hair was. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, man. Too it's funny. summer, yo. Beautiful, bro. You're beautiful. Aquaman, just, and he's just gliding. He's that just gliding. Oh, yeah. my. Look at Aquaman. Yeah, he's yeah. he's just chilling, bro. Yo, I bet like, that was a big moment for him, probably. Like, being there, sharing that This with is you like guys. what I... And look at that's right. That's one of my favorite photos ever. I love that. Aquaman just crushing it. Aquaman. 
And he, we're like, so much happened that we day. We were like, what's your name, bro? He's like, oh, not a cloud in sight. Oh, man. Not a cloud in sight. So sight. I'll tell you this. This is, here's the chain of events right here that you probably you, didn't, you're the, not. The washrooms. Yeah, right here. So you might not even be aware of this. So you brought me down there. Then I told Evan about it. Evan went down there and crushed it. And then Evan came with me to the gazebo and absolutely murdered the gazebo. Cause wow. you didn't you didn't come with me to the gazebo yet. No, 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 I didn't, yeah. So you brought me to Woodbine, I brought Evan, and then I brought Evan to wow. the gazebo. And Evan He's he's an incredible artist. He Honestly, shout out to Evan. I have um, a picture, I think. I also, here. y'all might know him by another name. I, should we should we say it out yeah, loud? Yeah, it's our boy. He's, he's, Ace Navi. He's on a label. He's he's doing his thing. He's um, got Songwriter of the Year of Canada. Jeez. That's our blessings, dog. Blessings, That's our brother. boy. Blessings, brother. Remember um, when we were sitting in my apartment three years ago or two years ago talking about doing a backyard show? The three of us. Evan. Yo, shout, shout out. Like, the music is beautiful. The voice is beautiful. That's that's Canadian. Canadian talent is... Is un... Undeniable. Undeniable. It's our boy. It is undeniable. It's our homie. Look what I found. Q Gardens. Bringing my fucking speakers. Those, um, those rocket... The Rocket the KRKs. This KRKs. is this is the beginning of our festival, folks. Of the community focus. Four years ago, exactly, and this man Earl, EM Lord, performed. That was awesome. Hey, it's EM Lord on the AM Grinding podcast. Tap into the homie focus. Stay focused. You know you got. You gotta drop some shirts. I love the hats. I gotta grab me a stay focused hat. Well, um, I gotta, I'll we gotta get you, some some Ray Halo merch. I'll like tell you one year no stuff fear. going. I'll tell you one thing. You go, you go. I want to get the next photo of you guys. Please. I do have a link in Taiwan. <laughs> okay. Or sorry, Thailand. Understood. That's that's. Derek. Oh yeah. My homie, you lived here. True. Shout out to Derek. But, but yo, why why can't we just get it all made in Canada? Oh, we can. Yeah. But I think we should go to Thailand. <laughs> we should all. Wait, let's, let's take a selfie. <laughs> Hold on. Let's take a selfie, my G. Yeah. Selfie? Absolutely. But honestly, you know what I know for sure is that out here, outside, outside, <laughs> boom. Canadian artists as talented as, as you guys are in Canada and it's like not that you're contained but you're totally contained so oh, yeah. it's like we are kind of I would to say. get here's the big thing to get Canadian artists like us to other countries that's where it catapults like when you take a Canadian rapper to Korea. No, let's, let's go to Australia. Australia. Let's go to Australia. Australia. All that shit. Germany. Let's go to Australia. Japan. Let's go to Australia. Got, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's fuck. I got the link Taiwan. Because you know what it Thailand, is too? Japan. Just look at Canada versus US. Like, yo, in the US, like, comics, for example. Dude, they can go on like a 50 state tour in their exactly. own country. Here, exactly. where are you gonna go? Montreal, Vancouver, back to Toronto? Three cities. That's it. And it's, it's like the Three same major 50. players. We got, right? nothing. we got nothing. Yeah. Got nothing here, so we go to Europe. Actually, to you, you know Southeast what? Asia. You, don't even say that we got nothing. We got something. We got, we got something. something. We, we got, sorry, so we got everything that we need to yeah, take yeah. on the road. Correct, correct. And I think, I think Canadian fans are also, like, they challenge us to innovate. Yeah, but I, here they they challenge the us. World, to the world is ready for Canadian independent rappers. I agree. That's the next blob. I'm telling you, Canadian bands have crushed it. Where's Connor Price from? I think the U.S. Oh shit! Sure. I thought I thought he was a Canadian I artist. I, I, I swear. First guess U.S. I, I saw a Havea Mighty feature and I thought 
there's some sort of Canadian but connection. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Toronto is the nucleus of international. Oh, he's Canadian. Collaboration. Man. Oh, no. See? You d- yeah, yeah, I, I see knew that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, we here's the beauty of Canada. We have all the links to Europe, to Australia, to Southeast Asia, to Africa, all these different continents yeah. that all come together in Canada. In yes. Toronto. Toronto is the meeting place. The pl- We're here in the damn city. Yes. We do it all. So, Toronto is the so meeting place. Instead of us competing to play in Toronto, it's about bringing Canadian artists around the world and flourishing. Mm. Rock artists have did it so well. Like Billy Talent, they just toured Germany and that's it and they crushed it. You have other bands that can go to just Korea and kill it. Bands that go to just Japan and kill it. It's time for Canadian rappers to really represent the world. And it's like, there's the threshold, the change of like, you know, we're not easily offended. We're also in a way like Very nice. a lot tougher, and we're nicer. <laughs> so it's like I, I think a I different. Think, we're gonna have yeah. a whole different aspect of hip hop, and it's gonna blow up like it did in the early two thousands. But unfortunately for Toronto, it stayed in Toronto and didn't blow up internationally. It, it will blow up internationally. It's, it's because like even then though, like I think I think what happened early on is like. We can't use the same models that our like count counterparts, ne- our neighbors next door are using. Yes, like we because have it works for them. Yeah, it works within for them, the but it's, it's different here because our culture is different. Yeah, we're from a beautiful city. We really I are. Agree. I this love is, Toronto. I do. Yeah. This is the most one of the most multicultural cities in the world. The multi- world, most multicultural you know, city and. World. Yeah. Let's let's fuck sorry let's fucking go let's go let's, let's go, go. I'm, from, I'm from Toronto yeah guys you know and straight I straight up man I straight up I have learned so much from the different cultures here that I have so much respect and I have to humble myself in the craft that I make to when when I look at at the people that I've met and I think about the challenges they're facing and their people are facing in their country mm. I I not only believe that I have a responsibility as a Canadian Toronto artist. Who has learned from these cultures? Um, like you know what I mean. When, whether it comes from from food to art to um, schooling to spirituality, fit, even like workouts. You know what I mean. Like love that. This this is one of the most incredible um, and diverse in cities um, in in the world. And we have we share so much. I could go down the street right and find. A bunch of different shops, different spaces that are owned by different people. You know, I can learn different phrases and un- have different understandings, right? In a few blocks. And that drives my purpose. Blocks. Yeah. That drives my purpose of like remembering, like, sorry, um, shameless plug, inspiring hope. <laughs> um, and this this one's for the real. Um, this is straight up inspiring hope because these people have given so much to me. Dude, so much to us. Even when we were out on the street busking, I remember, yeah. All the different people that we <laughs> yeah. met, bro. Yo, yo, who's down to do a little freestyle right now? Jeez, We've been down, talking down, about down, a little down. one, two. All right, like five, ten seconds. Who cares? All right, let's get it on the wide shot. Ten, ten. Yo, right. yo, big shout out to Ravina doing her freestyle challenge. We see you. And I, I think that's another thing too. We got to champion um, the ladies of hip hop in this. Yeah, scene. I agree. You know what I mean? Who are holding it down and 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 really like embodying the culture. Look up Mishy Me. Oh, let's go! You guys, are putting go. Me on. you guys are putting me on. You know. I, I think I mentioned Jose Mighty earlier too. Yeah. Yo, Toronto. Yo, Canada in general. Mm. Canada, best. And yo, some of the producers. You already know. I, I got I got Top one of my favorite producers. producers. Beats producers. Beats by more. Beats Ooh. by oh. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's go. Sandra. All right. Let's do a little freestyle to finish it off. All right. I got EM Lord and my babe Ray Halo on the top. We coming on the flow. 
We will never stop. It's glowing, flowing, traditional mowing. We're breaking down the blades of grass and we show in the sunshine. Every day is fine, feeling glistening, and I feel it divine. The connection, selection, positive, mention. It's all in your affirmation every day with your sentence. You'd be locked in the prison, the prisons of mind, the prison's decisions feeling so fine. But as I go, let it flow, realizing that it's all a show. Recognize two double eyes when you're cross-eyed. Focus can't keep it in line. As I swerve all over the side of the street, I go flying off. And it's all discreet. Dead meat on the side of the street. Focus rolling with another transition. Flow fires. And I miss my mission. I miss my quote in my daily accolades. Put it back in the blade. Sharpening my skills. Sharpening my play. I pass it on to E.M. Lord as he explores. Hey, I'm from the city of Rob Ford. Doug for let's just explore, settle the score, looking for more, trying to be with all my homies that's on tour, mm. we want more, need an encore, yeah. work live production for encore, ooh, who really want war, oh, God. they gonna see we gon' soar, turkeys, remember that weekend in the summer we in the park doing burpees, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I remember I said I don't want no more sugar than bought a Slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm in this bitch forever. This like herpes. Niggas want to talk to me. I cut them like turkey. Shout out to my homies from Turkey. They real to me. Understand what it is for the real MC. Understand. <laughs> Understand. Understanding. Welcome to my planet. Flows is gigantic. Move like Titanic. Ooh. Cold world, you should get a blanket. J. Cole, Burr. Stay cold, bird. <laughs> Nigga, need more fur. <laughs> <laughs> Today, war. Oh, uh, yeah. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Yo, we climbing, trying to hit the pinnacle, but we're too busy staying cynical. Gotta stay positive, gotta stay in the clear. Some people drowning the life in weed, some people drowning the life in beer. They can't see what is right in front of them, but maybe we can, maybe we can show each other. Show my sister, show my brother, no other at the table telling fables with my brothers, with my friends. There's no end in sight. Yeah, I take the negativity and I bend and bite, and then I might just hold my belt tight. Mmm, now Ray Halo like, turning into light. Hey, turning into light, and then I expand in the sand, and then I smooth. Got nothing to lose and nothing to prove. I'm a shoe. Ugh, I lost it. I gotta be. Nah, you, you ain't lost. I you gotta beat. I gotta beat. Fade it out. You fade it out. Nice. I stole the words of it. The wine. No, you fade it out. Nice. <laughs> that was a fade. That was. A fade. <laughs> it was a fade, man. It was a classic one. It's a classic one. <laughs> hold up, hold up. It was a fade. I heard a fade. All right. <laughs> Yo, I, I love this beat. I like where this, this is, is going. Great beat. Yeah, this is Jay Electron. Hey, we the nucleus. Look, yo, we the nucleus. Used to smoke the doobies. <laughs> this where the movie hits. Uh, this where the rubies shine. Make you blind, can't press rewind on this tape. Yet you squeeze like a grape or a lime. Kinda like a nine, nigga, I'ma make it mine. Pay attention to the times. God's coming and you know I want mine. Yeah. I remember going through the darkness and imagining I want shine. Yeah. But either way, I lost myself. There's a soul I can find inside the pit, inside of it. I admire all the homies and you know we so legit. Yeah. Earl of Paradise. I, I got it. You got a paradise. We roll it. Two oh, sixes. Paradise. Go down to three threes. Now we go. ET coming in from the moon. I fly up like a balloon. Over our bird eye view. Now you can see who's who. 
without prejudice. Yeah, they mess with us. Can I get some OJ and some ice? Yeah, put a little bit of spice. I got some cognac to spill. I got kale and dill salad going in my tummy, tasting yummy. It's the flavor of life, you know we thinking double and we thinking trice. We got spades. I think about my boy King K, who has it made in heaven. I pass it to my boy Focus. He counts to seven. <laughs> seven up. It's time for all fools to shut the fuck up. Jeez. Sit back, listen in, conjugate. Maybe you'll learn something instead of hate. Maybe I'll just real on happiness to sit back and relax and shit. And I don't give a fuck about these congregations. So I'll sit back patiently waiting. And maybe I don't care anymore. It's just being Canadian or being bored. Maybe I just don't care about all these things that are holding me down. I let it go. And I let it off the pounds. You know, feel the light as a feather. Every day I get my collecting together. It's the the feathers that keep me the weathered and I'm paying attention to all these things that are decisive and devices in your mind slices boxes up turning up in rices what's your life worth is this boxed out can I live you're getting boxed out George Shavala 12 rounds and I'm out Muhammad Ali let him be he's seeing stars Excellently. And it's a star. I pass it on to EM Lord. You're gone. You know the far. real. You mentioned Ali. I'm holy field. Oh. Don't bite my ear. There's the rhymes you like to hear. I heard that Tyson's near. I guess I'ma hide my ear low. I hope you cope. I'm prepared to this. I'm prepared to to bless the mic. The acolyte, never after been a life. After life, after I'm life. only chasing after light. So pass the mic. Mm. Let the Johnny Cash recite. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yo, check it. Mm. Yeah, uh, check it. Yo, da da da, da da da. Yo, my lines they punch like Tyson. My crew pull up to the venue like Bison. Mm. We got the herd, I don't know if you heard We pull up to church, kneels down, stop praying I don't care what you be saying Because I know it ain't with the Lord I bust the chord, A minor to D minor uh, I feel like I see minor things that turn into major things in my brain And then I sing to the, sing to the haters no auto tune, but I sing to the haters. Cause I'ma make up my own destiny. Why don't you rest with me and I can kiss your belly be This lady, we need them making life. We breed them. Heathens coming in all shapes and sizes. I like piñatas, so I grab the prizes. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, you guys beat the best out of me, I swear. Alright. You guys be the best. Shall we wrap this up? This will be the free the wrap up freestyle. Ten seconds each. Ten seconds each or whatever. Ziggy right. ziggy damn. Lead the way. I lead the way. I plead to say. It's hard to play it safe, cause I came to propagate. They try to complicate but can never replicate. The imitate really what you know I relevant. I relinquish all hold on life, I'm not in control, God hold my mic, you know what it is, I told them what I'm like, I'm colder than the souls of men who hold things, a little change will get you touched like a presto, remember nights I only had veggies and pesto, with my pasta, now I'm a rasta, eating lobster, with the monsters, moving like Blanca, you know I'm moving like I'm E-Honda, driving Hondas, Oh. I'm in the Tonka truck, you know what it is It's complicated mama, understand what it is I promenade in drama and readily I rev <laughs> These revelations coming crazy to my dome Yeah, we inside Focus's home I'm focused for real <laughs> Damn. Hey. Pass it on the steel Okay, okay, yeah 
Yeah. Uh huh. It's getting. I, I feel a little rushed. I feel like we should we should we should do do a full some full. We're doing it right. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Tell me now. Uh. Yo, it's getting cold outside, so I put the cap on. Trying to put the bat on to the knees, to the knuckles, start the buckle, feeling the violence. I look in her eyes and all I can see is silence. We don't speak. We just hear each other breathing. We're so mad at each other, we start seething. Yeah, the spit is dripping. So I grab the cognac, glug glug, start sipping, start dripping, make up sex. It's the best, but can we keep doing this over and over? We make up through a text. I come over, put the blanket, then we sink it. Damn, another day, another dollar, but I'd rather holler at my next dream, at my next project. And we pulling up to the next sec, next sector. Pull out the vector, spray out all the IEDs like paintball. I ain't all with you, I'm by myself, I'm alone. Uh, I want you to feel my funny bone Ha ha, laugh, laugh, yuck, yuck Chuck, chuck, we tuck, tuck What we got, buck, buck, chuck, chuck Yeah, we, we up, up We up, up Who ya? My girl in Texas, we talk to ya Ha, to ya To, 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 to ya To ya To ya, to my boy Focus No Focus Pocus <laughs> <laughs> we threw with ya, we fooled ya, not again, that's a fool's <laughs> dream, fool's bean, fool's me. Yeah. I cashed in on my green beans for the, the stock exchange, Jeez. well I roll in my brain, it's the ambitions that I roll with the fame, yeah, I let it go, let it flow, and the oceans dissolve in my micro mind and in myself. Or am I just putting myself in a box? We just stop realizing we can't talk. Mm. No communications. Vibrations in my waiting. Well, Beautiful. Yo, po- yo, focus. Yes. What's happening? I think um, my brain's empty. <laughs> And I've had a great amazing. time with you guys. That was amazing. I think we should wrap it up. Thank you for the invite. And we're coming at two I, hours I, I, I now. W- I want to wrap. I'm down to it. <laughs> All right. Um, you you want to host it? You want to like just say a word or whatever? Just like you know, we, 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 like, got it out. You're just like, you want to wrap it up? I, I, I just want to wrap. Excited. You want to wrap it up, but I just want to wrap. You got me excited. <laughs> and thank you for inviting us to your home. Man. Well, yeah, we can keep busted. wrapping. How about we just wrap this? No, we'll... no, we we good. No, we good. We good. Yeah, 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 yeah we, we keep good. Going. We're excited. We're it's excited. it's it's one of those things where like you know feeling this energy makes you want to keep going, but oh, we yeah. also know it's it's eleven twenty eight. It's a yeah. good time. It's a good time. You know, and and we're we're blessed to kind of have this fellowship in yeah, our history. Yeah. You know, that that's what it's all about. It is. You know, yeah, bringing absolutely. folks together that we, we vibe with, we mesh with. Um, and as, as creators who, who make great music, in my opinion, right? And that's all, always going to be subjective, right? Mm. But we make great music, mm. but we can have fun. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Like, this is, it doesn't have to be this very, like, all the time serious thing where you're just kind of, like, always making these very... Just create something fun, bro. Yes. Yeah? You know what I mean? And I think that's that's the next step to this all, you know? Almost Paradise mm. is coming with something very soon, but we, we're not going to announce anything about it. That's right. You know what I mean? Um, Almost Paradise uh, is, is coming out with something special soon for the folks. And we just got to prepare, you know? So, um, but as, as a production, um, production person, somebody who works in live production, I've been really blessed to know Humans that work in post, humans that work in live and post, um, and are ridiculously talented at what they do. On top of that, are musicians that I can connect with and learn from and and talk business with and build community with and share certain values. Mm-hmm. You know, have, I'm a I'm a family fun. person. Have fun with. Have fun with. Have fun. Is that, that what we did today? Yeah, that's exactly what I had fun. Yeah, it's a fun I'm still man. having fun, man. Yeah, fun, man. Thank you. Like, you, you gotta you gotta hold hold on a little longer than that. I don't, I don't. I don't mean drunk motherfucker. I don't there we go. Yes. The snapback. Ah. Like I'm, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I have nothing else to say. Like I'm. I'm doing.
just happy and grateful. Um, my, I guess my final message is like, don't lose hope. Keep searching for the positivity and, and it, will sh- it will show itself onto you and never give up. Never give up fighting. Always be a fighter. And never give in to the dark side. That's all I'm going to say. Never give in to the dark side. Always fight for good. So Appreciate the real ones in your life. You know what I mean? There's, there's so many challenges that come. But you really get to see who the real folks around you are. Um, and, and you know what I mean? Like that's, that's one of the things that, yeah, you, you get some real friends around you. Everything else, like, you know, it doesn't really matter. Like, all the, the all the bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's it's so simple, but it's also, it's a journey to get into that space, to recognize it, you know? So this one's for the real. So, Shameless plug. <laughs> this is for the real. Thanks, guys. It was Thank a pleasure. You so much. Love you guys, man. Awesome. Appreciate man. it. Thanks this, for having me. Yeah, this episode is going to be called... We did it! <laughs> we did it! This is the episode... To remember, <laughs> folks, episode thirty-eight. Wow, Huge. this is this is raw, unscripted. We probably said a lot of things that we're we're gonna be like, wow, that's everything kinda, was good. Everything was good. Though. Wow, that's kind of like it. that. We gotta expand on that. Wow, what was I trying to explain there? But I think that because it's truth, you know, and it's thoughts that are coming out, mm-hmm. and it's coming from here. Yeah, you know what I mean. These are things that we're honestly maybe looking to be more knowledgeable about have more understanding and wisdom you know to attain that power and that and that understanding over our situation as independent artists right absolutely you and to what? all the indies out there you're you're valuable i think you we, are valuable i think we met exactly like four years ago Jeez. Like almost what is day, happening almost to the day Damn, man. And what the is pain happening? lady give a shout out pain lady nelson nelson sobral Good man. Kunzlo, uh, what, what's the host name? Um, Kunle. Kunle. Sorry, my, my bad, Kunle. Sorry, but shout out to you. Respect to you. I've always had good interactions with you. He's a great guy. Uh, have a conversation with him. You'll have a conversation with you. Um, so respect to him as well. Yo, and Kunle um, plays incredible music. Uh, yeah, you know? There you go. Yeah, Tap yeah. into to both Nelson and, and, and Kunle, both the hosts of those open mics mm-hmm. at, that used to happen at. I know they still happen, but that happened at the Painted Lady. Incredible yep. talents, um, and they champion community. So that's true. That's the energy that's you know true. we're coming off of they, of being they, in those spaces. They they are uh, appreciative, a lot of respect for the holding it down, and also like the transition of the lockdown into live music today. So thanks to everybody holding it down in the community and independent musicians and we are our, all a community collective and That's right. I want to thank my two dear buddies my brothers respect Ray peace and EM thanks everybody stay, stay focused, focused. Stay stay focused. focused. <laughs> peace <laughs>